recording, just FYI. So don't do anything crazy that'll get you in trouble if it's on the internet. All right, so we're going to be talking about databases today. Um, now, you guys have to use the databases to find all of your sources for your essay. Why do you think that is? Why are we making you use the databases to find your information instead of Google? What do you think? So, like the second essay. Yes, okay, so every single article that you're going to find on the database is going to be credible, reliable, trustworthy, and accurate. Whereas if you were to just do like a Google search, you know, like 80% of the stuff that pulls up these days on a quick Google search is not reliable, super biased, not trustworthy. Okay, that's why we require you guys to use the databases when you are searching for professional academic sources. Um, so. I'm just going to like kind of give you guys an FYI, a little bit of a warning. Searching databases is exponentially more challenging than searching on Google. I think there's kind of a misconception where you can do the same things that you do on a Google search in a database search, but that's just not true, unfortunately. So you're not going to be able to go to the database and just type in like your profession and your issue and then find all of these like perfect made for you articles that are going to be great on your essay. Okay, and that's not how the databases work, which is why I'm here talking to you guys today. I'm going to give you guys a lot of tips, tricks, tools that you guys can use as you start the research and, and database looking process. The first thing though, the very first thing that we always want to do before we start researching on a database is actually what your guys' homework is okay, that you have due tomorrow. You want to think about key terms that you can use in any given search. Five, I would say, would be like the minimum. Okay, And you guys are required to come up with five key terms that you think you can use in your search. <coughs> okay, but you could go anywhere up to like 10. I would say the more terms that you have to play with, Okay, the more varied um, and specific you're going to be able to make your searches. So for today, I am going to be using the profession of chiropractor because that is what my husband does. So I already know a little bit about the profession. And then my issue that I'm going to be researching is medical malpractice lawsuits with chiropractors. Okay, so already right there, I've got four terms, right? I've got chiropractor, I've got medical malpractice uh, lawsuit. And I can also add in there care, patient, and probably some other stuff, chiropractic, okay, back pain, all of that kind of stuff. So I've got a lot of terms that I've already kind of brainstormed that I can play around with that I'm going to be using to show you guys how we, how we do database searches and to show you how we use some of the tools that I'm going to be going through today. What I would like you please to do is get out a piece of paper and a writing utensil because we're going to take some notes. Man, best day ever. Old school notes, and we get to start an essay. Woo -hoo! We're living our best life, guys. So we are going to talk about some research strategies to get us started here. If I write it on the board, it should probably go in your notes. All right. The first research strategy that we are going to talk about today are these things called Boolean operators. Anybody ever heard of a Boolean operator? Not a one of you? Boolean operators? Oh man, we're gonna nerd out so hard guys, it's gonna be great. Boolean operators are short words that you can use when you're searching the databases with your key terms, okay? And what the Boolean operators do is they will either limit your search so they'll narrow down the amount of articles that the database is pulling up for you, or they'll expand your search. Now, most of you are going to want to limit your searches because you're going to have thousands of articles when you do a basic search. So we need to know how to limit those down so that we're not sifting through thousands of articles because ain't nobody got time for that, right? A lot of, uh, not a lot of us are going to want to expand our search. However, if you have like a very specified focused field that you're doing for your career, you might want to expand your search. So just kind of keep it in mind. I'm going to go through all the Boolean operators, all three of them. Okay. There's only three. Don't panic. Um, and I'm going to tell you how they each work so that you guys can have an idea of how you could use them in your searches. So the first one that we're going to talk about today is the word not. Okay, not is our first Boolean operator. 
And we're, when we're using the word not, we use it in conjunction with two terms. And what this tells the database is, hey man, hey database, I just want you to find articles with one of those terms. Just one term, not terms. Yeah. So for example, if I searched in the database, I searched chiropractor, because that's my profession, not lawsuit. Like maybe to start out, I only want to look at articles on chiropractors, because maybe I just want to gain a better understanding of what a chiropractor is and does, and some general information. Okay, so that's my first term, chiropractor. But maybe I don't want any articles about chiropractic lawsuits just yet. Okay, so if we look at each of these circles as each of our terms, term one and term two, what the word not is telling the database is, hey database, I only want articles about chiropractors right now. So only show me articles that contain the word chiropractor. If it contains the word chiropractor and the word lawsuit, I don't want to see it yet. You with me so far? Okay, so the Boolean operator not is considered a limiter, right? Because it limits or narrows our search result. Instead of giving us all of these, it's only giving us a piece. Okay, number two. Number two is my personal favorite Boolean operator. Yes, I have a favorite Boolean operator because all cool kids do. You can borrow mine if you want. It is and, okay? Now, and is like a super limiter because what it tells the database is that both terms have to be present when I'm doing an and search. So if I were to search chiropractor and lawsuit, okay, lawsuit. So here's my term chiropractor, here's my term lawsuit, what I'm telling the database to do by using and is I only want to see these articles. I only want to see the ones that have both the word chiropractor and the word lawsuit in them. So I'm really limiting and narrowing the results of my search using that Boolean operator and, which is why it's my favorite. Okay, I think it's extremely useful and I always use the and Boolean operator when I'm doing searches. Always. Okay, number three, here we go. Number three is going to expand our search results. And number three is the word or. What this tells the um, database is you can show me articles with one or both terms. I don't really care. Okay, so if you're not picky or you only have like one result from a search, you know, maybe you want to try or. Okay, so again, I'll do chiropractor or lawsuit. Okay, so here's my chiropractor term, here's my lawsuit term. So this is telling the database every single article you have with the term chiropractor in it, I want to see it. Every single article you have with the term lawsuit in it, I want to see it. Every single article you have with both terms in it, I want to see it. See why it's an expander? Now, I hardly, I don't think I've ever used this one actually. Okay, and the reason why is because if I'm seeing articles with the word lawsuit in it and not chiropractor, most of those are not going to be relevant to what I'm looking for. Okay, which is why I really don't use or. You would have to be very specific with your terms if you are going to use or, so just kind of keep that in mind. Those are the Boolean operators. Any questions on those? Okay, one question that I have had in the past couple classes, I am capitalizing my Boolean operators. You do not have to, okay? They're not case sensitive. So if you just type or and not in lowercase, it'll function the same way. Okay, the reason that I like to capitalize them is because I think it, it's easier to see where all of your terms are when you're typing it into a search bar. That's just why I do it, but you don't have to. It's not going to change your results either way. Okay, next we are going to talk about some search symbols that we can use. 
So there are some symbols that you guys can tag on to different searches that you're doing in the database that'll again help kind of narrow down your search results. We're going to talk about three. The first one is an asterisk. It's that little star shape. What we do with an asterisk is we put it at the end of a word. I shouldn't say the end of a word. Sometimes the end of a word, most of the times the end of a fragment of a word. And what the asterisk does is it tells the database, hey, I don't care how this word ends, so give me all the results with all the different endings of the word. So for example, if I type in chiroprac with an asterisk, what that tells the database is, hey database, look for articles that have the word chiroprac and then whatever other endings that are a little hard desires. So this is going to yield me article results that contain the word chiropractor and chiropractic. You with me? So it'll generate any given end of a word possible. And there may be more, okay, but those are just the two that come to my mind that have the chiroprac and an ending. So teach. Teachers, if you're doing like the teaching profession, that would be a great one to use the asterisk for. You could do teach asterisk, and then it would search teachers, teaching, teaches, uh, yeah, and more <laughs> that I can't, that aren't coming to my mind right now. Okay, does that make sense though? Super helpful. Highly recommend you guys use that if you're doing a profession where you could have varied endings to the name of your profession or varied endings to the name of your issue, okay? Because it'll help kind of broaden your results a little bit in a good way, right? We don't always want to broaden our results, but that would be a good broadening. All right, the second symbol is quotation marks. And um, when you use quotation marks, you want to put two or more terms inside of the quotation marks. What this will tell the database is, hey database, Whatever terms are inside the quotation marks, I want you to pull me up articles that have that exact phrase in them. So if you want only articles that have a very specific phrase that's maybe a typical phrase used in the issue or profession you're researching, put that sucker in quotation marks and type it in the search bar because you're probably going to get a lot of really great results from that search. So for example, maybe I would want to search um, chiroprac, and you can put asterisks in the quotation marks as well. Okay, chiroprac lawsuit. So if I only wanted articles that had that exact phrase, chiropractic lawsuit, chiropractor lawsuit, in it, then I would put the quotation marks around those two words in my search bar. Now you just want to be careful about the number of words you put in a quotation mark phrase, okay? Because the more words you put, the more limited your search results are going to be. And you want to make sure that it makes sense in order, okay? Because all of your results are going to yield that exact phrase in the order that you type it and the way that you type it. So make sure you're spelling it correctly, okay? So if you're doing like five terms all in a row, that could get tricky, okay? Especially if it's not like, an appropriate way people talk. So for example, if I put like chiroprac lawsuit malpractice patient care all in quotation marks, I would hope that I would get no results because that's really weird wording for a well-written article, right? Okay, but if I maybe wanted um, like chiropractic uh, malpractice lawsuit, that would make more sense. Okay, so there's ways that you can kind of play with it and manipulate it to find you know, resources that will be beneficial to you. Okay, the last symbol is parentheses. You guys know about the order of operations when you're doing a math equation? What do you always solve for first? What's in parentheses? Well, hey, guess what? You can do order of operations formulas when you're searching the databases. If you put parentheses around a set of terms that maybe use a Boolean operator, you are telling the database, hey database, 
I want you to search this stuff inside parentheses first before you search all the rest of it. So it's really cool. You can kind of like build formulas for your database searching. So for example, I for sure know I want articles that contain the word chiropractic or chiropractor because that's the field that I'm focusing on. So I, I know for sure I want that and I know for sure that I want articles that are about lawsuits. So I'm also going to throw lawsuit in there and I'm going to put that in parentheses because that's going to tell the database, hey database, look for articles first that contain the words chiropractor or chiropractic and lawsuit. I want to see those articles first. Then after you do that database, then maybe you can look for articles that also contain the word malpractice. Because then I know that every single article that's coming up is going to have to do with chiropractors, lawsuits, and malpractice. It's pretty sweet. So as I'm sure you guys have gathered from everything that I've just talked about with you, there are endless possibilities of combinations that you can put in a search bar of a database. But you are gonna have to be really intentional with the way that you're searching these databases. If you try a combination of a couple of your terms and you're not getting the results that you want, you're gonna need to be comfortable enough to switch it out. Try something new. Try using a Boolean operator. Try throwing you know, one of the symbols in there to see if that helps you kind of narrow down your results. There's lots of things that you guys can do to make your lives a little bit easier when it comes to navigating and searching the databases. Just don't be afraid to play. Okay, I played around a lot with these yesterday when I was you know, prepping to come and talk to you guys, I took time to think about the terms that would be the most effective in my searches. Okay, It just takes time. It's not gonna happen instantaneously like Google. I know we're all about like the immediate gratification, right? We want it now. I'm still waiting for like the last book in the series to get here that I pre-ordered that released on August 30th. And I'm like, it's not here yet. Where is it, right? Immediate gratification is real. Okay, but we gotta get comfortable sitting and kind of playing around in that uncomfortable territory for us. Okay, do you guys have any questions on that? Does that all make sense? Now we're actually gonna put this into practice using the databases. So go ahead and pull out your Chromebooks. We're gonna to go to Google. Does anybody happen to know how, uh, what website we go to to access the databases? Does anybody know? Oh, thank goodness I'm here. Don't worry, I'll save you. All right, we're going to go to library.sd, as in South Dakota, dot gov, as in government. Library.sd.gov. Dot dot go. Now, if you get a pop up that says, allow this website to access your location, hit allow. Okay, because South Dakota Public Libraries are like super awesome in that if you are a resident of South Dakota, you get free access to a ton of databases. Okay, but the computer has to know that you are currently residing in South Dakota. So just a little word of warning, if you leave the state, you might lose access to these databases. That has happened to my students in the past. So just like try not to leave the state when you're doing your research, okay? All right. So to get to the databases from the library website, you click on databases on the upper toolbar, or it's also on the left-hand side, just hit databases, and that will bring you to the list. Feel free to start scrolling through it, okay? There are tons of databases accessible to you guys. And the cool thing is, there are a lot of databases that are geared towards specific professions, especially the medical professions. So if you're doing a medical profession, there's probably a database for, I actually know there is, there's a database for medical professions. I think there's also one for like art and stuff like that. So you can kind of spend some time looking through those databases. You might find one geared towards your profession and you might want to start with that one. But for everybody else that just wants like a general overarching covers everything database, <laughs> I have got three for you, okay? So I'm gonna talk to you about my top three databases that I know, that I love, that I use all the time. 
I also just want to point out the little flags that you see next to the databases, okay? Don't use any that are flagged for elementary school or middle school because we are neither. Please use the high school ones or the college university ones or the public library ones. Um, those are going to be the ones that are more at our level. You know, if they're flagged for all of them, they're probably not relevant to what we're doing. Like this one would not be helpful to you. All right, so my top three databases. Here we go. Number one is Academic Search Premier. It is the very first one when you go to the database page. Academic Search Premier has millions of articles and sources available to you. Okay, so it is really, really great if you're just looking for a place to start. Number two is a database called SIRS Issues Researcher, and SIRS is S-I-R-S, -S, like, yes, sir. <laughs> a SIRS Issues Researcher. It's got like a green icon. Do not confuse it with SIRS Discoverer. SIRS Discoverer is for elementary kids, so don't use that one because it will not be helpful. Okay, but SIRS Issues Researcher, why I love this database is because it deals with controversial topics. And what it will do is it will have articles arguing both sides of controversial topics. So if your issue that you're doing for your essay is a controversial issue that has a lot of debate on both sides of it, you might want to check out Service Issues Researcher. It's also just like a really cool database. So if you're ever bored on a Saturday, yeah, you should go play around with it. Okay, but the piece de resistance, my absolute favorite database. Yes, I have a, a favorite database because I'm super cool, is ProQuest. We're going to go to there. Okay, so you can either scroll all the way down to P or you can type it in the search bar at the top. It is ProQuest, just like that. And it's going to be right here. The ProQuest Research Library is my favorite database. I use it for all my research purposes. And I'm going to tell you why. Okay, you all with me? I want you all to go to ProQuest. So if you're not there, go ahead and go. We're gonna navigate here together. We're gonna play around with it a little bit. So here's the reason why I love ProQuest. First of all, it's like Academic Search Premier in that it covers like tons, huge variety of topics. It has access to millions and millions of articles. Okay, but the reason that I like it better than Academic Search Premier is because it's pretty. And I'm being very serious when I say that, okay? Like, it looks good. I think it's a lot easier to navigate than Academic Search Premier. I think it's a lot more user-friendly than Academic Search Premier. It's literally, like, I like it because it's pretty, okay? So this would be my number one recommendation to you, but definitely the other two are viable options. And again, you can look for those databases that are career-specific. All right, here's what I want us to do. In the search bar, you have options. If you are highly distractible, I want you to type exactly what I typed on the board, okay? Just like stay with me or you're gonna get lost. If you're not highly distractible and you trust yourself, I want you to just start by typing in the name of your profession. Just the name of your profession. So if you're highly distractible, we're typing in chiropractor. And when you type this in, hit search, and I want you to pay attention to the number of results that you get. So by typing in chiropractor, I have gotten 14,761 results. Can anybody beat it? What you got? 7 million. <laughs> no, you did not. Well, it's director, so it probably has a lot of other definitions. Oh, but... that is, okay, you're the winner. You have the highest out of anybody today. Seven million? Oh my, you couldn't even get through half of that before you croaked. That's crazy. Okay, well that's absurd. So we're gonna help you fix that. Um, anybody else have a really high number? Like maybe not seven million high, but like higher than 14,000? What you got? 124,000. Yeah, that's a lot. A million? Oh my gosh, wow, you guys, what did you search? Pilot. Pilot, wow, that's crazy. Okay. So that's, that's overwhelming, right? There's no way that we're going to be able to get through all of these thousands and millions of articles. Okay, so what can we do? If you are able with the title of your profession, I want you to insert an asterisk, okay? Because I want to search chiropractor and chiropractic. So I'm going to add an asterisk 
to mine, and I want you to pay attention to what it does to my results. I jumped from 14,761, boom, doubled it, 29,047. What? I thought you were supposed to be helping us limit our results. I am. Okay, calm down, we're gonna get there. Right? But this is gonna help expand our results in a good way before we start the limiting process. Okay, so again, you're just gonna wanna play around with some of this stuff, bear with me. Okay, now, 29,000, absurd, I can't. I can't even begin to fathom going through 29,000 articles or seven million. <laughs> Did you change yours? It's nine million. It's nine million. <laughs> it's nine million. <laughs> That's fantastic. Okay, let's add a Boolean operator in there, guys. So everybody add a Boolean operator. Again, it's not case sensitive. I just like to capitalize mine. I'm going to search lawsuits, so if you're highly distractible, you're with me. Anybody else, search something, another term relevant to your field. Okay, oh, I capitalize lawsuits too. Oh, well. Look at how many results I have now. I jumped from 29,000 down to 1,075. Okay, that's still a lot. I still can't get, like, that would take me a couple months to get through, but it's getting better. Okay, what are we at? That's 9 million in the corner. 8 million? <laughs> what did you type? Uh, I, I typed film. Direct. Director, not film. Not film. Add an and for me. Okay. So not film and what? What kind of director? Uh, I'll just say film. A film director? Are we doing a film director she's or not? changing not to Anne. Yeah. Right? Oh, you're changing not to Anne. Okay, yeah. so now where do we at? Uh, 500,000. So much better. <laughs> Holy smokes! We just went from 9 million to 500,000. That's amazing. That's a great leap. Okay, I love it. We're going to keep going. Here we go. What else can we do to help us kind of narrow down our results to make it something that we could actually use on our essay? Any ideas? We've already used a Boolean operator. We've already used a symbol. What else can we do? What else can we do? Come on. Let's go. What do you think? Um, choose like a source type that you want to find. I'm glad you said that. No. Okay. <laughs> nice try, but no. All right, don't choose a source type because remember, we're on the databases. All of the sources are credible. So we don't want to eliminate any because we could be eliminating one that's like the golden ticket for our essay, right? So I would say don't limit by source type, but what else could we do? Publication Yes. All right, please look at your publication dates on the sources that are pulling up for you. Mine date all the way back to 1980. If you are in a medical profession, you do not want sources older than five years, okay? Because the medical profession is constantly changing and new information is coming out. Okay, other professions, you can maybe go back a little further, but we still want our articles to be relevant. We want them to be as up to date as possible. So ideally within the past 10 years, and there are gonna be exceptions to this rule, like film director might be a little bit of an exception depending on the issue that you're going with, okay? But we definitely wanna limit because I don't want articles from the 1900s at all. Since I'm a medical profession, I'm gonna to try to limit within the past five years and I'm gonna to have to click a couple times, but you guys can slide or you can enter a date range, hit update, let's see what happens. So if I just look back to articles from 2010 and earlier, I've already cut my results in half. I'm now down to 551. Also, there's an alien among us. Time traveler, because look, I have an article from 2029. I don't know how that happens, that's amazing, okay? Crazy. I'm gonna limit this a little bit more to like the last five years, if I can. Come on. I don't know what just happened. No. We're gonna go back. Sorry guys, bear with me. The Promethean board is hard to finagle here. There we go. Okay, so now my results again should kind of cut in half. Yes. Okay, perfect. So now I'm looking at articles within the past five years. I've got 222 results. Oh, that's a sigh of relief. Going from 29,000 to 222. It's still a lot, but it's so much more manageable right? There's something else that you guys need to make sure you always do before you start looking through the articles. The other thing you always, 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 100% of the time have to do is 
click this full text button. Okay, we want to limit to full text because what happens with the databases is that a lot of times they will just have an abstract of an article, which is just like a summary of articles. Okay, we don't just want a summary. You can't use a summary at, on your essay. You have to have the full text. So always click limit to full text. Now it only got rid of two results for me. Okay, but it might be a bigger jump for you. What are you down to now? Around 100,000. Look at that. Man, we went from 9 million to 100,000. Progress. You're definitely going to want to use some more Boolean operators and stuff like that, but you're getting there. Okay, I love all of this. Now, the other thing that you can do, and this might help you, okay, if you scroll down along this left hand toolbar here, you're going to get to all of these like drop down menus. These are all ways that you can again limit your search. And specifically the one that I think is going to be helpful for you guys and you especially in the corner there is the subject. So if you open the subject drop down menu, you're going to see all of these different subjects that the articles you currently have pulled up in your search fall under. So they're like sub subjects of the search that you already made. Okay, and if I look at what I have here, I don't really want articles about attorneys. Like, I don't care about the attorneys that were involved in these chiropractic lawsuits. I care about the chiropractors. But I definitely would like to know some of the state and federal court decisions. And if you look at the, at the number inside the parentheses next to each of these subjects, that tells you how many articles you'll get if you click on it. 43 articles on state court decisions, 30 on federal court decisions. I can get through that in a class period. Heck yeah. Right? So these are all ways, all strategies that you guys can use to really help you focus and hone in when you are searching on those databases. Does that make sense? Do you have any questions so far? Okay, I want everybody to open an article. I don't care which one you open, just click on one. That looks fancy to you. Okay, I'm going to go click on another one because... Can't get PDFs on here. I know this will work. All right, so when you click on an article, a lot of you will probably see an abstract at the top of your article. Again, the abstract is the summary. I always recommend if you have an abstract, read it before you read the article, okay? Because you want to know if you're going to waste your time or not. If the summary sounds good, then go on to read the article. But if you read the, the abstract, the summary, um, you might be like, eh, I don't think this article is going to work, and then you can move on to something else that will. Okay, so always read the abstract if you have it. Um, and I have the full text just here right available for me, but a lot of you are going to have over here, you'll have like a PDF link or HTML link that you'll have to open to access the full text. So just kind of keep that in mind. And if you don't see the full text, it's because you didn't hit the limit to full text button. Shame, shame. All right, I want to show you a couple things that you can do. If you find an article, like if you have an article in front of you right now and you're like, oh man, this looks interesting. I might want to use this on my essay. Here's what you do. You hit all options. So hit the three little buttons in the upper right hand corner. It'll pull up this box and you will have the option to save the article to your Google Drive. Anytime you find an article you want to use on your essay, you find an article where you're like, and I'm only like 10% sure I maybe might want to use this on my essay. Or if you find an article that you're interested in, but you don't have time to finish reading in a class, just take two seconds to click that Save to Google Drive button. What it will do is it will create a ProQuest folder in your Google Drive, and anytime you hit that button, it will add the article to that folder in your Google Drive. So just know you'll get a different folder created for every database you use. Okay, so if you're looking for articles on five databases, you're probably going to have like five database folders. But that's just a really good way to make sure that you'll always have access to the article. Because if you try to copy the URL and paste it later, or if you try to search for the same article later, there's a very good chance you will not find it. Because the databases are constantly changing and updating. Okay, so the same stuff that we're finding today is not going to be the same stuff that we're going to find tomorrow. Which is a good thing, you know, we have recent sources, but it's also a bad thing for saving your sources, which is why you always want to use this option. Now, the other thing that you guys always want to make sure you do, if you find a source and you're like, ooh, yes, love it, using it on my essay, hit this cite button. 
because this cite button is going to make your work cited citation for you. But please pay attention. Okay, we do not do APA here at the school. What do we do? MLA. So we want to make sure we do the drop down. We scroll to the MLA. Okay, all the way at the bottom. <gasps> no. Why are there seven different MLA options? What do I do? What do you guys think? What do we do? Which one? You can guess. It's okay to be wrong. Okay, good guess. That is the most recent one last year. That's the one we used last year. But now we've got the ninth. Oh, Mrs. Berg, there's three ninths. Which one do we use? Yeah, I had to email Mrs. Hermanson and be like, yo, Mrs. Hermanson, which one do you want them using? She said title casing. Okay, so when you guys choose, you're going to do MLA ninth title casing. But please be warned, it is not 100% accurate. Okay, there are things that you're going to have to change. So you're always going to have to make sure that you um, you look at the O'Gorman Writing Handbook and compare it to what is here. Because even just glancing at this, like the article title isn't in quotation marks or anything like that. The dates are not going to be a proper MLA format. It's not going to have the date of access. So it's like a good starting point, but just know it's not going to be perfect. Okay, and if you need help, Writing workshop, shout out, before school, after school, fourth and fifth period, every day of the week, come see me. I will help you with your work cited, help you with your research, whatever you need help with. That's all I wanted to go through with you. Do you guys have questions on any of that? I promised you a game, and I'm about to deliver. Do you have anything else, Mrs. Hermanson? So um, just remember for tomorrow, you want to answer that question, determining the five terms that you find will be most helpful. If you change your topic, if you can please email or ask me about your new topic before you start researching that, um, I think that would be helpful.